If the hype gets you wanted to pick up singles or sealed product, then smash that. Link in the description. Use the code Kenobi at checkout. And get 5% off your order at coolstoffinc.com. Elspeth has returned in the story articles telling us what's happening with March of the Machines. They've been happening over on the Mothership Raptorite Chapter 7, I think, and some other interim bits too. I actually hadn't bothered to catch up. I was planning to read it later this week and maybe do like a, a summary video if it so tickled me. But then one of the articles, uh, one of the stories, one of the chapters had a spoiler in it. The brand new Elspeth. So, I've jumped ahead. We're talking about Archangel Elspeth in today's video. This is the new Planeswalker card from March of the Machines where Elspeth has returned after she took the Silex away from Jace after they had, they almost began to have doubts that the Silex being detonated at the bottom of the world tree might just unravel fabric of, the fabric of reality itself. So she's not dead. Or at least, she might have been dead. And I'm going to talk a few spoilers around the story now as well. But in the chapter 6 one, we see Elspeth reliving her own memories and seeing visions of different places. She is taken by a guide. A guide takes on the guise of her mother at first. And later on we discover and finally find out that it's Sarah. The uh, original angel planeswalker created Sarah's realm. She's told she has one point, one time that she can interrupt. Perhaps it's a one-time dealio with whatever spell Sarah is using to, to interrupt. It's all a bit airy-fairy, actually, in terms of how Sarah manages to, to do this. I haven't read anything but chapter 6 and 7, by the way. But essentially, Elspeth planes walked away with the Silex, and then she got reborn and rebirthed by Sarah to be an avenging archangel. The card itself is a four-mana legendary planeswalker Elspeth, obviously. Starting on four loyalty, she upticks to create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink, which is very Elspeth. The lifelink is a little bit of added spice, a little bit of added sauce, considering Elspeth usually just makes one once. Her minus two puts two plus one plus one counters on target creature, and it becomes an angel in addition to its other types and gains flying. So it's a bit of an angelic blessing. Not quite the plus three plus three that angelic blessings have given in the past, but it's basically angelic blessing, but with counters. In some ways, it's a throwback to her original card. Her original, original uh, Elspeth Planeswalker did do angelic blessing as its tick down. It made a soldier, made them fly. This one instead gives you permanent counters and it becomes an angel and it gains flying. It's not a temporary thing, it's more a permanent buff. I do like this thematic through line from her original one to this one. I'm not saying this is the last Elspeth we've ever seen, but it feels like the culmination of her full arc where she finds out she's from the angel plane of Capenna and New Capenna and now gets reborn as a Archangel Planeswalker. Her ultimate's really hot. Minus six, which an all non-land permanent cards with mana value three or less from Greyrod to the battlefield. I love a little bit of recursion in Mono White. I love uh, returning CMC three things to the battlefield like Sun Titan does. Oh, I, I love that stuff. The thing is, we can't really evaluate her based upon her ultimate because the ultimate of Planeswalkers is not where you should evaluate the power. So what is her power level? Well, she's a four mana Planeswalker that makes a 1-1 and she permanently buffs creatures both with evasion and flying and counter. If we're completely honest, I think considering the big story moment that it is, this card is, as the kids would say, a little mid. A little bit disappointing. Now, I don't want to bang some drum that Elspeth should be the most powerful thing going. I mean, sure, like... <laughs> I, I, I don't think power creep is needed for the for for everything, but sh this is like the penultimate story moment where Elspeth comes back and 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 intervenes in the killing of Khan, Chandra, Koth, and Ren on the plane of New Phyrexia. Uh, she has a mission now in the story as well. Another spoiler here: she realizes through the tutelage of Sarah that Ren and Nissa are both important to the World Tree, so she must distract Nissa and get Ren to the World Tree. I assume Ren is gonna uh, forge with the World Tree, and in this she battles. Elish Norm, and she also stabs Elish Norm for the chest, injuring her significantly, and outflanks her, and, and uses Elish Norm's powers against her to get out of some sort of like prison wall enchantment thing to to get back into the fight. So we see the avenging Archangel that is Elspeth, absolutely wrecking shit, and I love this art. All of this art is fantastic. The action shot of her fighting Elish itself, the 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 bright fluorescent ring wings of her flying. So there's at least three arts here. I assume that the the Arpa Dynast Perko. We know that is the main Elspeth card. I'm assuming this action shot of her with the wings is going to be like an alternate art of the card. Her stabbing Elish Norm through the chest may be the third sort of like borderless version, but I doubt it. The framing seems off. This is probably an action shot of a spell like Elspeth's Lunge. That's a really bad name. That's not the name it'll be. Or like Elish Norn's uh, defeat or whatever something like that all the angel feathers from the previous arts of her going to what we thought was perhaps the uh, Nixian afterlife but it turns out it was some sort of realm between worlds maybe the decimated remains of Sarah's plane or something like that some lore expert down below can tell me exactly but this art did remind me of Crucible of Worlds the the double masters art one that we got uh this this art is not 
Elspeth. Right? This is a blonde woman. I don't know if it's actually meant to be Sarah or someone else. You know, that Sarah is blessing the feathers and the, the collapsing, floating parts of the world and stuff. That's very Sarah's realm. And the song itself, Song of All, is a um, a piece of uh, a, a piece of poetry that is referencing the acts of Sarah. Uh, the MG Wiki lists all the cards that it's been seen on, and and it's like a it's like like 15 parts of it across many many cards, including the classic Sarah Avenger, which is the the one that I remember having a Song of All reference. So is Elspeth descending through Sarah's Crucible of Worlds? Oh, there's there's layers and there's context here that I very much enjoy. I do think though that this this absolute story moment could have had a slightly more powerful planeswalker. I really like in the story that when she descends, she like superhero landing, craterizes the bridge upon which she lands before she fights the uh, Jinkataxis forces to defend Khan. And I, I joked in my Discord, I would have loved it if this like a planeswalker was a four or five mana white planeswalker that ended the battlefield and like goes quarter to land as a static E2B before it started doing its thing. But no, we've got an absolute callback to the original Elspeth. Uh, instead of giving everything indestructible to protect it, she instead resurrects things. And that's something to keep in mind as well. The resurrection is a quite a cool thematic element of her bringing back what was lost in the Phyrexian War. But it's value three or less, which means most of the walkers won't make it. I guess. Incredible art. Very cool story moment. I wish her power level was pushed a bit further, but I mean, she's solid. I could see myself playing in Gladiator, perhaps. I think she fits in as a slot there, but I don't think she'll make much waves in historic or modern or legacy or anything like that, which is a shame. Truth be told, she seems like a strict upgrade over Elspeth Knight Errant, like her original version. So it's really funny for me to like read this and assess it thinking that this card isn't good enough because I've played Knight Errant in the sideboard of legacy decks in the past. It would allow you to jump creatures over ground, creatures like Tarmogoyf and stuff, but I guess magic has evolved and changed. Every format has grown and been power crept since, I don't know, maybe half a decade ago when I was playing Knight Errant in sideboards. What I'm saying is that Knight Errant was good and is still reasonable as a magic card, and Archangel Elspeth is almost certainly better. She upticks to make one ones to protect herself and eventually resurrects your board. But I still think for the epic story conclusion of our hero coming back to save everyone from the march of the Phyrexian onslaught, she's a little bit disappointed. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.